Uh, in the next segment, we're going to have some fun. I'm going to show you some sentences that have multiple uh, possible interpretations. One is literal and is not funny, whereas the second one uh, is not the intended one and can be sometimes very funny. So the first such example is children make delicious snacks. Imagine this is a headline in some newspaper story. The point of the author was essentially to report that some kids were preparing some snacks that were very tasty. However, because of the way that the sentence is constructed syntactically, uh, it also may be interpreted as uh, children are very uh, tasty when you eat them. Let me show you a few more such uh, sentences that have this kind of uh, unintentional meaning that is uh, funny. Stolen painting found by tree. It's as if the tree found the painting. I saw the Rockies flying to San Francisco. Uh, here the funny interpretation is one where the Rockies are flying to San Francisco. Uh, court to try shooting defendant. Instead of uh, trying or putting on trial a defendant of the shooting, we actually want to shoot the defendant. Ban on new dancing on governor's desk. Red tape holds up new bridges. Governor, government head seeks arms. Blair wins on budget, more lies ahead. Local high school dropouts cut in half. Hospitals are sued by seven foot doctors. Dead expected to rise. Minors refuse to work after death. Patient at death's door, doctors pull him through. And finally, in America, a woman has a baby every 15 minutes. How does she do that? So uh, the previous slide showed you some what I called classic examples of ambiguous headlines. Uh, the, this slide is going to show you some examples that I actually collected on the internet recently. So the first one is Vancouver police shoot man holding box cutter. So the two possible interpretations here is that the man who was shot was holding the box cutter, which is probably what was intended. And the other interpretation is that the box cutter was used by the police to shoot the man. Another example. Man armed with box cutters shot by officers, which is the same uh, story. Police shoot men with box cutters in Astoria, and police shoot men yielding box cutters, and police shoot men with box cutters. In, in the uh, third, fourth, and fifth example, we have an instance of what is known as uh, a prepositional phrase attachment, where uh, a prepositional phrase such as with box cutters can refer to either the nearest noun, man, or to the verb, shoot. So in the case when it refers to the nearest noun, it modifies it so the man was carrying the box cutters. If it modifies the verb, then uh, with box cutter uh, uh, modifies uh, the way in which the person was shot. And a few more real headlines, just for fun. Bulgaria doubles money for parties. Motorola to hire 300 Android developers. Massachusetts exhales as bill passes, heads to Canada. U.S. eyes returns to the moon. And finally, flesh-eating bug survivor goes home. All of those are real uh, headlines, as you can see from uh, the URLs. So uh, let me now show you some examples of ambiguous recommendations, which will illustrate different uh, issues with natural language. So uh, a funny example here is, a man like him is hard to find. This is written in reference to a chronically absent employee. So the intended interpretation of this sentence is that this person was so difficult to find that because he was absent all the time, but the sentence was made to look like a real recommendation sentence, specifically uh, somebody who's so valuable that people like him are really difficult to find. So here we have an instance of what is known as a lexical ambiguity. So the word hard to find, I'm sorry, the phrase hard to find has multiple uh, interpretations. In one case it means uh, somebody who is very valuable, in the other case it means somebody who's hiding. And here's some more examples of lexical ambiguities. For a dishonest employee, you can say he's an unbelievable worker. So unbelievable here is the ambiguous word. It can mean uh, somebody who's so good that it's hard to believe that person exists, or it can also mean that this person should never be believed. For a lazy employee, you can say, you would indeed be fortunate to get this person to work for you. Again, here the ambiguity comes from the word fortunate. In one case, it means that you will be happy to work with such a person. In the second case, it means that 
it would be a miracle if this person got to work for you. There are other categories of uh, linguistic constructions that can cause ambiguity. For example, we can have structural ambiguity, scope ambiguity, and others. So in uh, structural ambiguity, I will show you one example. For chronically absent employee, you can say, it seemed that his career or her career was just taking off. So here the uh, ambiguity comes from the fact that taking off can refer to um, that the fact that the career was just starting, meaning that this person had uh, even more uh, good things uh, in their future, or it means that her career uh, was uh, just the business of taking off from work. In the scope ambiguity, uh, we can look at an example of for an employee who is not worth considering as a job candidate. You can say, all in all, I cannot say enough good things about this candidate or recommend him too highly. So here the ambiguity comes from the fact that say enough good things can mean that either you have uh, only a few good things to say about this person or that you have way too many good things to say about this person. If you want to find more examples of uh, this kind of uh, funny recommendations, you can look up uh, Beatrice Santorini's collection on the internet. Okay, so uh, now in the next segment, we're going to talk about the administration of this class.